Never Trumper George F. Will takes a high dive, uh, sadly, off the deep end. His piece in the Washington Post on Wednesday was headlined, Trump is no longer the worst person in government. Now, can you guess who is? No, it's not, no, no, not Scott Pruitt. No, no, it's Vice President Mike Pence. Low-key, self-effacing, and loyal Mike Pence? How could that possibly be? Well, George Will has a conspiracy theory, and it's a whopper. He wrote the following. Mike Pence, with his talent for toadyism and appetite for obsequiousness, could, Trump knew, become America's most repulsive public figure. Well, Will's theory is that Trump picked Pence because America would have such a revulsion for his VP, it would take the heat off the president himself. But there's a tiny little flaw in this theory. What makes Pence so repulsive, exactly? Well, as proof, Will cited the Post's calculations that during a cabinet meeting, Pence praised Trump once every 12 seconds for about three minutes, with such hideous comments as, quote, I am deeply humbled. I guess you can't say that. Now, Will doesn't just find Pence's humility repulsive. He also seems to have some kind of issue with Pence's faith. Will wrote, quote, Pence, one of e evangelical Christians' favorite pinups, genuflects at various altars as the mobocratic spirit and the vicious portion require. Well, Will was similarly offended that Pence would call himself honored by the presence of former Sheriff Joe Arpaio at a gathering in Tempe, Arizona. The Veep called Arpaio, quote, a tireless champion of the rule of law. According to Will, Pence's repulsive humility, piety, and respect for the law make him, quote, the authentic voice of today's lickspittle Republican Party. Well, Will's absurd accusations were gleefully picked up by the feedback loop on the left as an opportunity to smear the vice president. Who is Mike Pence? I don't know. You know, he, he, he doesn't really seem to have core convictions or beliefs beyond whatever Donald Trump's decided they are. He's striking this balance trying to be, you know, the man that uh, will inherit the mantle of Trump, but at the expense of his own persona. There are two kinds of vice presidents. There are those who are accused of being so out for themselves and nursing their own ambitions that they're not uh, uh, serving the president who picked them. And there are those who are accused of being slavishly loyal lapdogs and so forth. Mike Pence has decided to be the former, or the latter, that is. He is a titanic and I mean titanic fraud. He is the most obsequious of all of Trump's cultists in the cabinet. We have never seen such slobbering servility by a high government official in this country than we do with Mike, Mike Pence. Consider the source, my friends. Is Pence really the worst person in government? And why are the Pence haters lashing out now. It's very interesting. Let's ask the vice president's former press secretary, Mark Lauder, Matt Schlapp, of the, he's the chairman of the American Conservative Union and Democratic Party activist, Chris Hahn. Uh, Mark, let's go to you. Uh, I've known Mike Pence since, oh gosh, when he was in Congress. He used to actually fill in for me occasionally on radio. We still joke about it. Uh, I found that from George Will actually really sad. He's had an unbelievable career as one of the premier uh, columnists, writers in the United States. He obviously doesn't like Donald Trump. That's fine. But I thought it was filled with such low blows. And I, I just say, I, I wasn't even angry about it. I was actually sad about it. It's not surprising. Let's remember that in 1986, he wrote a column that called then Vice President George H.W. Bush a lapdog. Uh, here's a decorated war veteran, a hero who would later go on to be a transformational president. So I think George Will has a problem with vice presidents who serve or transformational presidents of the United yeah. States. And to get to use a baseball term that I know George would like, you know, the best players in the world miss seven out of 10 times. And in this case, I think he struck out swinging at a pitch in the dirt. Well, uh, let's go to you, Chris. There were I think there were overtones in this column that George wrote, and he was picked up by a lot of media figures, as happens on yeah. cable news. Someone writes something, we're talking about it. And he, he talked about how he genuflects at the altar. It, 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 was, it was imbued with all these religious uh, overtones, and it seemed really condescending to me, condescending about Mike Pence's faith, <laughs> almost questioning Mike Pence's faith, oh, you're not a real Christian. I mean, he didn't write that. But you could read between the lines, and that's right. And I, I say this as someone, I like George Will. And, you know, a lot of people don't like right. George Will who watch this show. 
I actually like him. I've known him for a long time, and it pains me to say this, but I thought the column was beneath him and filled with low blows and not at all in any way illustrative of the man who Mike Pence is. And he's a wonderful person well, look, and I think a very effective vice president. Well, the column got picked up broadly because the vice president decided to plagiarize Richard Nixon during the Watergate scandal that morning that the column was released. And I think, look, while I do think the tone was harsh, it's not like George Will said his opinion doesn't matter because he's about to die, which is something that's been said inside the White House these days. So I think we got to back off on this is such a bad thing. Let's face it. The vice president is the bootlicker in chief in this administration right now. He is the one who praises the president most. He kisses his butt most. And what's sad about it is that in 2020, this president will drop him from the ticket because this president cares about ratings and who he picks for his vice presidential candidate candidate at the convention will be the biggest ratings night of that week. So, Mr. Pence, you might want to so, stand up to this president <laughs> a little bit because he's so, not going to stand by you yeah. in the end. Uh, Mike's going to take a swing at this, but before he does, uh, so were you concerned about Vice President Biden taking on Obama? Because I'm trying to remember, oh, wait, he never did. <laughs> like, when did Vice President uh, Biden take on Obama I, for screwing up the Obamacare website, for screwing hey. up Benghazi, for screwing up the, the trailing of, of journalists, for hounding people who applied for IRS status? When did Biden come out and challenge Obama's abuse of power? When did he do that? Well, Never, Laura, Matt, when go, did any go, vice president, go, when did right, any vice why, president so why ever are you really going after Mike that? Pence like that? You didn't criticize Biden for it because you know that vice president's role is to support the president of the United States. Go. Yes. Okay, so why is Mike one go, thing, go. but what he's doing why is my, Hold on, Chris. Hold why, on. why is Mike Pence being attacked? You know why he's being attacked? Because it, it's this. about go. pride and ego of these never Trump writers. They can't really admit that the agenda is the most conservative agenda we've ever seen, that he's actually doing what he said he would do. And you know what Mike Pence is doing? A man with a 99 percent voting record with the American Conservative Rec Union. I don't know what he ever got wrong, but I guess he got one thing wrong one time and all the time was in he, Congress. He that. But. Yeah, he disputes <laughs> it. But the point is, is this. You get attacked by these people because they think we're deplorable. They don't think we have any moral standing to make the case that do what Donald Trump is doing is the right thing. Uh, and I'm going to tell you, Mark, when you, Hillary talked about the basket of deplorables, Obama talked about the bitter clingers. <laughs> George Will, in this moment, has more in common with their view of middle America from, from where Mike Pence came than he does with the conservative voters across America who said, we fed up with these parties. We're going to go for someone who's going to take a wrecking ball to the old Washington way. It's elitist. It's snobbish. And it's unbecoming. It's unbecoming. And, and uh, so millions of Americans who support this administration are horrible, awful, racist, xenophobic, terrible people. Really? It, Good it, luck building a movement well, on that idea. And no, hold on. Mark, I think anybody's saying. saying. First, hold on. This is not the first time this has happened. The same thing happened in 1980 when the American people turned their backs on the mainstream Republicans who had another preferred candidate and elected a strong leader like Ronald Reagan. They did it again in 2016 in, in President Trump, and the elitists can't get over it. They haven't yeah, gotten Trump, the memo. Trump doesn't doesn't keep a you know a th a thesaurus and Thucydides by his bed. Perhaps you know George will. You know it's always it's always the seven <laughs> syllable words I, that you know like nobody everyone. Has to like look him up when he okay that's fine and I like that yes. that's, that's kind of quirky about Will I like that but go ahead Chris my my concern here is that the timing of this is curious they're striking out on Trump Trump's numbers are going up so they think they can gin up something on Pence I mean Trump's numbers yeah. are improving well, day by day by day because the results are there for the American people. Well, nobody's really going to base their numbers on Trump on what Pence is doing. I just think that George Will had a feeling about Mike Pence based on what happened in New Mexico when he went, excuse me, in Arizona, when he went out there with Joe Arpaio. Look, I think a lot of people have reasons to think Joe Arpaio is somebody who should not be touted by the vice president or the president. Joe Arpaio disobeyed a court order. Joe Arpaio, what he did out there was racist in many people's eyes. So I think George Will sees that. And he says, look, this is not the Republican Party. This is not the conservative movement that he grew up with, that he likes to see. And he would like to see 
Mike Pence be the backbone of conservatism to President Trump? Because let's face it, President Trump became a conservative about four years ago. Mike Pence has been a conservative his entire life. So if, if Mike Pence is becoming more like Donald Trump instead of bringing Donald Trump more like Mike Pence, then conservatives are going to have a problem with that. And I think that's what George Will was lashing out about it. And look, you want people to talk about it, you better say some crazy things. Well, you're doing good at saying some crazy things, and I just all I would say is this, which is, do we want to win or do we not want to win? I know the president talks about if we won enough, we're tired of winning. Okay, but listen, here's the deal: conservatives are actually getting more done, and we're in a window where we can get even more done than we've Azar. ever Look at gotten Azar. done. Azar, Azar is going to be the, one of the big rock stars of this administration. The H HHS secretary is not usually someone who gets a lot of attention. I've known him for 25 years. He clerked with me at Supreme Court. Brilliant. But he could have been a cabinet secretary of many. He could have been AG. He could have been That's anything. Right. But he's doing this because we got to get this prescription drug stuff. This has to be tackled the right way. He's going to do a lot more. He's an idiot. Bob Light has well, Wilbur Ross. These are these. Tom hold on, Mayer, Chris. John Bolton. These are these are people of real substance <laughs> who are doing really hard work. And I think it really irks people who are never Trumpers right. and a lot of the Democrats because it's like they're throwing stuff up against the wall. And I'm telling you, when Steve Schmidt, because uh, he ran a great campaign with McCain and Palin, Where did he get when he wasn't words? trashing uh, Palin, by the way, uh, Steve Schmidt said this today. Let's watch. We've listened to this guy for many, many years in this country on his moral high horse, assaulting the dignity of gay people um, across the board. His moral preening is famous throughout the land. Uh, the same vice president who just swore in uh, Rick Rennell, gay American, to be the uh, a new ambassador, ambassador to, to Germany. Germany yeah. Okay, so so if you're really a if you're a, if you're a, if you're a faithful Christian as he is. He's, by nature, homophobic. I mean, this is where we are in the country. This you can't disagree on some core issues without being a terrible, awful, rotten, xenophobic, homo... It's, it's just the litany of can stupidity. I, can I jump in on the timing? Yes. You're exactly well, right. Well, he didn't What's say he was homophobic. On, he says he panders to people on. who are homophobic. It's very different. Hold on. Uh, I, I'm happy that Rick Grinnell's going to Germany, personally. I think it's a great thing for the country yeah. and for the administration and for, and, and for America. But let's look at the timing of this. It is because, if you look at all the polls... The right track, wrong track, it's improving for the first time in a decade. Trump's numbers get better and better. And you know the only place where Trump is a little weak is foreign affairs. And he's having all these accomplishments. What the Democrats are seeing is this big blue wave is starting to, is starting to go away. And this is why they're starting to panic. Uh, Chris, I want to play a, a bite from you from our friend Nicole Wallace, who's always been very charitable toward people who make uh, mistakes. She was on MSNBC today, and she got very upset about Sarah Sanders. Let's watch. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? Why can't she just say, if a staffer said that, we're going to get to the bottom of it, and she'll be fired? Um, how do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? Uh, she went, uh, she went on like Twitter and she apologized. Oh, she said, uh, just, I guess the tension's getting to her. I used poorly chosen words uh, for that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean... I mean, they're talking about the comment well, made by Sadler in the White House that, uh, about, about McCain, yeah. which was an unfortunate comment made, made in private that we was don't clearly even leaked out. We don't even know if it was Well, hold on a minute, guys. We do not you know. You know, look, we, Matt, Matt, yes, Nicole Chris. Wallace apologized, Sadler should apologize, and the White House should apologize for that statement about an American hero. This all is ridiculous. I, is, I don't I understand Chris, why they can't apologize Chris, for anything. John McCain, I do Chris, not agree with John McCain on a lot of things, but John McCain is an American hero who should be respected <laughs> and who should not be talked about by this administration Chris, as he has been, not just know, by Democrats, Sadler, but by the yeah, president have, himself. This is enough of all this. First of all, you don't know what happened in a private meeting. None of us knows what's happened there. They've I love all the it. moral judgments that come in. I think John McCain deserves his peace and quiet at this trying time. We all believe this. But he still has a voting record, and it's okay to talk about it. And it's okay to talk about him opposing the president's uh, nominee to be the head of the CIA. You know what? All that you stuff You know what John legit. McCain said? He said, don't feel sorry for me. He said, don't feel sorry for me. Yeah, but, Matt, but, but, there's so much but, nasty but, rhetoric out there that needs to calm down, and it starts but, at the top. But, it starts with the president. We well, see that CPAC, yeah. where, your, where your communications director now, said now some, some horrible things CPAC. about Michael Steele. Where's the apology there? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, Chris, we can go back, and I can cherry-pick... 
uh, the, the, the bright lights of the left in the entertainment industry, in the media. Now we're, we're threatening to choke people. We, you know, we're going to blow the White House We're talking up. about you know, the all White the, House. You know, but, all, but we're, we're talk, if we're going to talk about vitriol, I mean, check out my Twitter feed any time of the day. It doesn't bother me. It's like, whatever. And You're mine. stupid. I don't care. And right, mine. So, but don't pretend to be like these shrinking violets. John McCain is American hero. John McCain is, who had a conservative voting record on a lot of issues. He disagreed with the president on a lot of issues. And I believe he said, that was last year, don't feel sorry for me. I'm, I'm going to fight my fight. Don't feel sorry right. for me. He's not someone who wants to be treated with kid gloves at any point. He's a, he's a tough guy who can, hand, who can handle, handle himself, saying, and Laura, he's an amazing person. All I'm saying, it's really easy for the White House just to say, you know what, that was, that was unfortunate. We apologize to the McCain family for that. They're going through a very she trying time, not just McCain him, family. his entire family. She called, yeah, the she called family. them. Stop it, Chris. Let's not try she to drive called the McCain. on these types say of questions. Say something from the podium. We, we have Sarah policy Sanders needs to just say people something people from the podium. MSNBC. Look, we have policy disagreements with these people at MSNBC. Michael Steele goes on the TV all the time, calls the president the worst things, and then he acts like he has the moral high ground. The same thing for my friend Nicole, and the same thing for these people who attack all of us Republicans who stand with the president. It's We're different tired when it's coming the from the White judgment. House, Matt. You used to work there. You know this. I'm proud it's of working there. It's different when it comes from the White House. My wife works there, and I don't think you should, and you should, you should smudge the characters of these good people. You shouldn't do it. Mocking, and, and before we I'm let not. everybody They're go. They're smudging their own on, characters. Chris, take, take, take a breath. Uh, mocking people's faith. If it were done uh, against an Islamic individual or people who are not like considered the horrible, awful, hateful people, Mike Pence has been mocked repeatedly by the popular culture that are fans and fanatics of the left. And it's been tolerated, and it's a wink and a nod. They think Christians are all stupid, knuckle-dragging troglodytes. Anyone who supports Trump is an idiot. That's what basically George Will thinks. And I think it's backfiring. So the left has got to try a different I, tactic. If, if you want to win, well, you've got to Laura, bring these people into the fold, not insult them. We're out of time.